I've been thinking about hope these days of captivity around the world because of a little virus that's running around. And there are things I'm sure many people are hoping that a vaccine will be found or a cure or whatever. And it got me to thinking that the Bible talks about hope. Now, I guess maybe the first thing to define immediately, many people, if you ask them, do you know if you'd go to heaven? Well, I hope so. Well, that isn't how the New Testament uses the word hope. As far, as far as I know, there's one Greek word, a noun and a verb, that is translated hope. In the Old Testament, there's five, six, seven words that are translated hope. But it, the hope that we have is a confident expectation. It's not that we're wondering whether this will come to pass or not, but we know because God said it, it will come to pass. And so, what is my hope? Uh, do I have any hope that things are going to become normal in a short time or a long time? Or will they ever be normal again? I, I don't know. If somebody's lost their job, which some many people have done, and you wonder about paying bills or feeding the kids or whatever, yeah, that's a pro high school seniors, I think I feel sorry for them especially because that senior year is kind of a special time for high school seniors. And especially for athletes. I read in the paper the other day that this one young man who goes to a school in this area was hoping to have a good spring so that he would get a scholarship to college. And that's, well, who knows, who knows what might happen. The Bible has the word hope in the Old and the New Testament. There's about 82 or 84 times in the New Testament and around 80 times in the Old Testament that the word, and I suppose it might depend upon the English translation, uh, that that, so that would be 160 or so times and I, I guess that qualifies as meaning that the Bible has some things to say about hope. It's not all pleasant because Job 7, 6 says, my days are swifter than a, we than a weaver's shuttle and come to their end without hope. If you're not familiar with the book of Job, you may not grasp that at all. But if you ever read the book of Job, you'll find out that he was in a heap of trouble, or as I would say, he's up a creek without a paddle, didn't know why and all, all of that type of thing, but it all came out okay at the end. Romans 4, 17 to 21 says this, and speaking of Abraham, as is written, I've made you the father of many nations, and that's a quote from Genesis 17, 5, in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, in hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told. Quote from the Old Testament, Genesis 15, 5, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith. This is from Romans 4, 17 to 21. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which is as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb and she was 10 years younger than him. And when Isaac, that promised son, came, he was 100 and she was 90. I don't think that would work out too well in our day's life. And I doubt it would. Th th this was a miracle. This was a miracle. But no unbelief made him weak concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Now, I'd like to talk about Abraham, but I, I'm not going to. I've already mentioned that in the New Testament, and, and I think this is probably true every place. I, I guess I didn't examine every one of those passages. But there is that confident expectation when the word hope is used. Paul writing in Philippians 1, 6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ. Thus, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have a blessed hope that what God has begun in you, he will also finish. He will complete it. He will finish that work of salvation that he started. 
You say, well, I thought I was saved. Well, yes, I, I claim to be saved, but I still am in this mortal body, and so my salvation is not complete. Ultimately, I think John 14, 1 to 3 kind of describes that work. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. I like the word mansions in the Old Testament, but the rooms, it's abiding places, probably be a more literal translation. Uh, many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That would be in the presence of the Lord, with the work of salvation finished. And if you want to know more about that, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the great resurrection chapter, or there's other places. Now, in this present time, we have the promise that the Lord Jesus Christ will be with us. When he sent out his disciples in Matthew 28, 20, he said, Lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the age. And, and you'll find his presence also in John chapter 14, verses 16 to 23, or Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. And I'm not going to read those, I'm going to read this one. Titus chapter 2, verse 13, which says this, Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That seems to be talking about what Christ promised in John 14. We're waiting for the completion of our salvation at the coming of the Lord. We have a blessed hope. And to finish this up, to remind you of what that blessed hope is. His presence now, but his presence in the future, face to face, face to face. I'm gonna read from 1 Thessalonians chapter four, verses 13 to 18 to close. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Bring with him, I almost think that must be referring to the soul and the spirit, which is departed to be with the Lord. For this we declare unto you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a voice, a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore encourage one another with these words. Now we have the Lord's presence now and the blessings that go with that. But the day is coming when we will see him face to face, and this salvation will be complete. God bless you.